Making it to the NFL for any player is a huge accomplishment and is the culmination of years upon years of hard work and dedication. But just because a player makes it to the NFL does not mean they will be a 9 or 10 year veteran and play in the league for a long time. The NFL can stand for not for long in a lot of players case and in today's video, we will be discussing several NFL players entering a make or break year in 2024. All of the players in today's video are former first round picks that will in a lot of ways be playing for their jobs entering the 24 season. Some will be obvious, but there will be others you may not expect as you may have forgot they were first round picks, or you may have forgotten about them entirely for poor team performance or poor performance from the said player. We will discuss their outlook with their team, their role in 2024, and what we can expect from them moving forward. Now let's begin. We are starting today's video with Lions wide receiver Jamison Williams. Jamison was the 12th overall pick back in the 2022 NFL Draft after the Lions traded up from pick 32 to pick 12 with the division rival Vikings in order to get Jamo. Williams unfortunately tore his ACL in his final career collegiate game, which was in the national championship in January of 2022. He eventually made his debut in week 13 of his rookie year against the Jags and finished his rookie year with one one reception for 41 yards and a touchdown, and a rushing attempt for 40 yards. He also had a huge touchdown against the Packers in Week 18 called back, and expectations entering his second year were pretty sizable for Jamison, considering the impact he showed in his time as a rookie. Unfortunately, he was suspended in April of 2023 for the first six weeks of the year due to gambling, although it was eventually reduced to four games in October. He finished 2023 with 24 receptions for 354 yards and two touchdowns, and while there were flashes of the player he could be at times, sprinkled in throughout a great 2023 season for the Lions, he has not lived up to the expectations as a former first round pick. He played 12 games in 2023, and I was hoping Jamison could have 50 or 55 receptions for 6 or 700 yards, but it was about half of that. He's in a great situation for him to succeed in as there are a lot of other playmakers on the Lions offense like Amon Ross St. Brown, Sam Laporta, Jameer Gibbs, and David Montgomery. But he only caught 57% of his targets in 2023, which was definitely concerning and actually ranked 169th in the league in catch percentage, and this is per pro football reference. Jamison is only 23 years old, and we haven't talked about the Lions in depth on the channel for a little bit, but I love Ben Johnson, and I would be very surprised if Ben doesn't try and incorporate quick touches for Jamison next year to get him into the rhythm of the offense more often. Drags, touch passes, hell, more carries and reverses, anything. He is dynamite with the ball in his hands, and this was shown in a big way in the NFC Championship game when Jamison had a 42-yard touchdown on the fourth play of the game. He only has 25 career receptions, and he is most definitely entering a make or break year in his young career. Next up is Quiddy Pay of the Colts. Quiddy was a first round pick back in 2021, and this one may be a tad surprising because whenever guys are entering the fourth year of their careers, you usually know what type of player they are and realistically what to expect moving forward. I like Quiddy and what he brings to the table as a player, but the way Quiddy sees himself as a player and the way the Colts franchise sees himself as a player are probably two different things, or should we say Quiddy's agent and camp. Pay had a 52 total tackle, 8.5 sack season in 2023, which were both career highs, but that does not mean he was consistently getting to the quarterback and a lot of the time, though not every time to be clear, but sacks can be very misleading numbers and I think they were in Quiddy's case. For reference, and comparisons like this always humor me, but Quiddy actually had half a sack more than Aaron Donald did in 2023. Obviously, those sack numbers aren't the same, and you can't compare the two, despite Quiddy, in theory, having more sacks than Aaron. But, I think Quiddy brings a lot of value to an NFL team as a run defender, and I think he will have the opportunity to be a Colt for a long time, if he wants to be, that is. 
The reality in today's NFL, with 31 other teams looming in any free agency period, you can almost always go get more money elsewhere, and I'm sure Quiddy will have that opportunity. But he's a junkyard dog in the sense of being a good run defender and giving 100% every play, and will always try to be the last one standing. NFL teams love players like that, and Quiddy will be a solid player for a long time. But if he has a career year in 2024, and he has a double-digit sack year for the first time in his career at just 26 years old, then there's a chance he can go get paid north of $20 million next offseason and get paid in a big way. That's why I think it's a make-or-break year for him in 2024. The opportunity will certainly be there for him as he's in a division with three other young quarterbacks that will certainly be throwing the football, but will Quiddy make the most of the opportunity? At minimum, I think he is a guy that will hang around the league for at least a decade because of what he brings to the table as a run defender, but if he has a career year in a contract year, well, you will hear the Brink trucks backing in because he will be paid in a big, big way. Now, from Indy to LA to discuss a recent first round pick, and it's Quentin Johnston of the Chargers. I know this may seem a little overreactionary based on how his rookie year went, but here's why it's a make or break year for him. QJ had 431 yards in his rookie season and was drafted by a previous regime. Jim Harbaugh and GM Joe Horitz have zero ties to Quentin. If he works out, great good for the team and that's a player that will get paid a small amount at a premium position for the next few years. But if he doesn't, well there's a lot of free agents that can put up what Quinton did in his rookie season, and a lot of free agents that would do anything to have the opportunity to be able to catch passes from a guy like Justin Herbert. Not only that, but what is big here for Quentin moving forward, and why this is a make or break year for him, is the number one receiver on the roster at the moment is Josh Palmer. Even if the Chargers draft MHJ, Malik Neighbors, or Roma Dunze in the first round in a few weeks, it's not like any of those players are going to have 250 targets in their rookie year and be the sole reason Quinton is fizzled out of the offense. It is now or never time for him. An unfortunate part for Quinton was having not just one good receiver taken directly after him and Zay Flowers, but two as Jordan Addison was drafted directly after Zay, who went on to finish in the top five in receiving touchdowns in his rookie year. Meanwhile, Quinton had 21 receptions in the first 11 games of the 2023 season. Now, he did pick it up a little bit in the final six games of the year as he had two games with over 50 receiving yards and dealt with backup quarterback play during this time, but if Quinton has a slow start to the 2024 season, things are going to get ugly quick because this is already a team that wants to help out Justin Herbert as much as they can by running the football and pounding the rock down your team's throat. If he cannot make an impact by week 5 or 6 of the 2024 season and have 3 or 4 touchdowns or have his first 100 yard game by then, I think the word bust will be tossed out more and more fair or not to Quinton. He has a very good quarterback throwing him passes, and he has a year of experience underneath his belt, and in an era where there are more receivers than ever before for teams to choose from, leashes are shorter on these guys than they have been at any point in NFL history. And that's a big reason why, despite Quinton being a first round pick last year, I think he is already entering a make or break year. Back to the East Coast to discuss Panthers offensive tackle Ikem Aquanu. Ikem was a very good prospect coming out of NC State in the 2022 draft process, and he had a solid rookie year for Carolina. His second season was a much different story, and he, and really everyone for that matter, struggled and there was a reason the Panthers finished with the worst record in the NFL. Ekum was credited with allowing 11 sacks and was flagged 12 times, and that's per PFF, but despite the struggles he had during the 2023 season, I still like his future and I still think he can be a good player for the Panthers for a long time. Having said that, that doesn't mean it's not a make or break year for him, because it most certainly is. One big thing that I think will naturally change for Ekum and the rest of the Panthers' offensive line in 2024 is the departure of head coach Frank Reich. I know Frank was let go during the middle of the 2023 season, but despite him being let go after they started with a 1-10 record, there wasn't much Chris Tabor could have come in and did in the middle of the year. No disrespect is intended to Chris there, but it's just not realistic for a team to rewrite or relearn an entire playbook in between games, have all 50 
93 guys on the roster learn brand new terminology from one week to the next and say, okay guys, here's what we're going to do from here for the rest of the year. But the big thing with Reich, and I'm not sure why this is, but the 2022 Colts, who were also coached by Reich before he was fired in place for interim Jeff Saturday, well, they finished 23rd in yards per attempt rushing that year. They also finished 23rd in rushing yards as a team, and in 2023, with new head coach Shane Steichen, Indy finished 10th in rushing yards and yards per carry, and they even went from 30th to 7th in rushing touchdowns. Bernard Ryman had a good year for Indy in 2023, but did Quentin Nelson, Ryan Kelly, and Braden Smith magically get that much better over the course of one offseason? Did they simply not work out entering 2022, and that was the big reason for the change? No. And the point is, with head coach Dave Canales and with the two big additions the Panthers had in free agency, in guards Damian Lewis and Robert Hunt, I fully expect the entire offensive line to improve, and that includes Ecom. High hopes wouldn't be how I would describe the Panthers' 2024 expectations, but I think they will improve in a big way, and I think Ecom will play a tremendous part in that. They improved in the run game after Frank Reich was fired, and I think they will improve further with a full offseason under their belt. Else. Now to Cleveland for quarterback Deshaun Watson, and this one is pretty clear. The Browns traded for Deshaun Watson during the 2022 offseason, and it was big news at the time and for good reason. They sent three first round picks for him, and they are still not selecting in the first round of the 2024 draft due to this trade. Through this trade, and granted there have been trades off of the initial trade for Houston, but through this they were able to acquire Tank Dell, Will Anderson, Damian Pierce, and most recently Stefan Diggs, while the Browns on the other hand received Deshaun Watson and a 2024 sixth round pick. Obviously you have to hit on your draft picks and you have to be able to develop the talent you bring into the franchise, but Deshaun has not been anywhere close to the player the Browns envisioned when they made this trade. I will be fair to both Deshaun and Browns fans when discussing this trade, because 2022 was always going to be rough for him, whether he suited up in a Texans or Browns uniform, as he went close to two full years without playing in an NFL game. But I wasn't impressed with Deshaun in 2023, outside of one half against Baltimore, credit Deshaun for playing very well in the second half of that game, but 2024 will be the final season of whether or not Deshaun is ever going to return to being that player. Some people are entirely out on him because they think not playing for two full seasons is too detrimental to an NFL player's career, especially at the quarterback position. I personally am leaning on being out on Deshaun and whether or not he can become that guy, and if there were a scale where 50% represented being in the middle, I would probably be around 30 to 35% to give you an idea of where I am on this. I'm not entirely out, whereas that would be 0%, but I am leaning on out in terms of whether or not he can become the guy again. Cleveland took a massive PR hit when they made this trade, and they took another big PR hit when they gave him a fully guaranteed contract worth $230 million, and they are going to start paying that in a big way in 2024, as per Spotrack.com, he has a cap hit of $63.7 million this year. Watson at his peak in Houston was an incredibly fun player, but this year will most certainly be the final straw of whether or not he can get back to being that guy. He has two good separators at receiver in Amari Cooper and Jerry Judy, and another good receiver at tight end in David Njoku, but the big question for Deshaun and the Browns entering the 24 season is, how will he perform this year? Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed, as I cannot thank you guys enough for the support, and check out the Football Analysis Podcast. The link is in the bio, and I will see you next time. Love you guys.